kind of funny. Yeah. So um, we're going to pick up um, a little, a little piece in the West Wing. And a uh, funny, funny thing about this is that um, this is the only uh, image on the internet uh, that you can find that has like most of the main characters in here. And if you look in the upper left, uh, the girl that's kind of got like a crazy, crazy eyes going on here. Um, she's actually on it, only in it for one season, so it's kind of a funny joke that this is the only one that has most of the main characters. Um, but, but the president's obviously Martin Sheen. Um, Leo McGarry here um, is the chief of staff. Deputy chief of staff is um, uh, Josh Lyman. Uh, Sam Seaborn, played by Rob Lowe, is um, the deputy communications director. And then uh, Toby Ziegler, uh, played by David Chief, um, is is the community or the communications director. And then C.J. Craig is the press secretary. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to pick up um, uh, a storyline. Um, they're getting reelected. Re they're going out to get reelected, um, and uh, we're going to we're going to talk about how uh, the government um, kind of comes up with ideas for bills. Um, and how, did that, how does that relate to products? All right, so here is, uh-oh, technology. This one played earlier. All right, so, so where we picked up was in the middle of, of um, Josh and Toby out in Ohio trying to get back to D.C. Um, they got left behind at a motorcade at a, um, a campaign rally, and they had started talking about education. And here they met Matt, who is, is a guy that makes $55,000 a year, has another twenty-five in from his wife, and... He just is trying to get by. Um, took a real hit in the stock market that day, and and the the notice that you saw when they kind of pointed to Josh, who was who wasn't really talking to the guy, he was over ordering a beer. He's kind of like, hey, hey, we need we need to to talk about about this, and so that's that was the cue uh, to Toby to say, hey, let's let's talk about this. I want want to hear about. So there's there's a whole other little bit of story that they that they kind of go through in this, um, and they talk about. Um, they, they hear Matt and, and what, he, what it is that he's trying to do. And this really hits for um, the product world when you're, when you're coming up with an idea. 
um, and you're, you're solidifying that vision. So you could be working on, um, uh, maybe it's a website or maybe it's a course or an ebook or something like that. Hey, we got Ryan in here, so we're, 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 we're getting them in one by one here. This is great. Um, and so it's, it's the, the idea that you encapsulate in that is, is that you, you are forming an idea. It could be, it could be anything. Um, what, what they're trying to do is solve a problem. Um, and the problem, as we all know it, is education is super expensive, right? Education becomes this, this like $60,000 a year endeavor that you end up graduating with a job that pays 30 and you're in debt. Um, so it really speaks home in that sense. But when you think about it as a product, where, where do all of our things start? Um, you know, you have a passion uh, for helping somebody. Maybe it's a, um, you know, uh, could be, could be, you know, I just like to help small businesses build websites, and that's that's my idea. So how do I form um, that idea into something? Um, so we're going to pick up their story a little bit. Um, they they make it home successfully to to Washington D.C. and separately. Uh, they, they start envisioning what, what it is about that conversation with Matt uh, that they had, um, and they're going to have a little conversation. Now, this, this conversation is, so my West Wing uh, love is, is they really adopted this, this walk and talk thing. So they're walking around the building and they're talking. Um, and that's, that's like an Aaron Sorkin um, go-to. Anytime they're having some dialogue, they're always walking around. So we're going to pick it up right there. Hard to see on the screen, but it says Watkins Deals Company or something like that as the headline of the, the paper. So they, they both had the idea, right? After talking to Matt, hey, let's make this idea, um, let, let's make college cheaper. Um, and what they do is they went and found clarity on it. And that's what we all do when we're thinking about a, a project that we're going to take on, a product that we're going to build, this idea that we have that solves a problem. We, we always provide and think about more clarity. Um, so Steve Jobs said it best in the software world. Um, people think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on. Uh, but that's not what it means at all. It actually means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that are out there. Um, and you have to pick carefully. Uh, Steve goes on to say that he's actually proud of the things that they haven't done as the things that they have done. Innovation is saying no to a thousand things. I like that quote because as, as you think about like 
all the ideas that you could have to build a business, to build a product, to, to help solve a problem, it's like, yeah, these are all good ideas, but until you really have that clarity around it, you're not going to be able to move on it. Um, I have I've had tons of ideas, and every time I'm at a WordCamp and I see a friend, I'm always like, hey, check out this new thing I'm thinking about, and I get a little bit more clarity on it, but I've probably never moved on it. Um, and that's and that's where we're all at, as especially as as like entrepreneurs, um, freelancers, anybody that's that's really really in that mindset. You think about that. All right, so that's phase one. It's all about ideation, all about vision, and getting a good firm understanding. Um, the second is is value proposition, um, and and so value proposition. Uh, what is it? Um, well, it's really a, a few things. The biggest one is it's a headline, right? Um, it's, it's a subheading or, or subheader with two to three sentence paragraph. Um, it could be three bullets, X, Y, Z, um, and then there's something of a visual. So, so let's look at uh, what a good example of, of a value proposition is. Um, here is Campaign Monitor's website. This may be a few months old now, um, but you can see their, their value prop is send email your customers can ignore. Uh, it's easy to use, professional grade email marketing and automation for today's fast growing businesses. Makes you, makes you really get the idea of what, what, what it is that they're selling. If you're, if you're looking to sell or send email to customers, hey, this is a great thing to look at because I don't want my email to be ignored when it gets into an inbox, right? So they're, they're speaking home to you and they're saying, they're, they're getting you to, to let, kind of look into them more. Uh, here's another one, WP101, learn WordPress the easy way. Uh, who's got time to waste on boring tech books? Uh, tired of homemade videos filled with uhs and ums or confusing tech jargon? Uh, ready to finally learn how to use WordPress to create your own website today? And then there's a start learning now. And you can see in the background they've got a bunch of people around a computer kind of um, learning, right? And so. Uh, again, this, this can speak to the certain audience that you're looking at as, as, as that value proposition goes in. Uh, another one is Optin Monster. Uh, so this is a fun one because it is going to kind of move through. So it's convert, fill in the blank, uh, visitors into subscribers, powerful conversion optimization toolkit to grow your email list and boost sales. Um, and so you can see as it's flipping through there. So again, another way to think about how do you create a value proposition around your idea to help your customers or your prospects understand uh, what, it, what it is uh, that you sell. Um, all right, so we're gonna take one, I think one last look at um, the West Wing a second um, and get into the rest of this. Um, this is a clip from um, a, an event that kind of wraps up. Uh, what they're talking about as we hit into the next phase of, of product development. And this is, is they're at the Rock the Vote event. Uh, so the Rock the Vote event is a real event uh, that happens around um, elections. And what we're gonna see is, is not only clarity among senior staffers, but they've also started to test kind of some of that value prop. Um, and what they're going to, to finally finish is what we're gonna look at in the next phase called the minimum viable product. Um, and that's, that's kind of where, where they take an idea, um, get the clarity, get the value proposition, and then take it over to the president to say, okay, here's what we think we need to do, here's how we need to do it, um, here's the steps in order to make that happen, can we go and do it? They, in, in the government, they don't get sign off until the president says, yes, let's go and do this. Uh, let's see if we can start it up here. That guy's gonna be buying a call twice at 55,000. All right, so they're, they're actually going to CJ, uh, the press secretary, just as a, as a, hey, let's make sure that this makes sense, um, and, and then we'll take it to the president. 
by the way, since we're done with the West Wing analogy for a bit, uh, they take it to the president, it goes, and that becomes uh, one of their campaign um, promises, is to, to change the education. All right, so let's talk about minimum viable product. Um, does anybody know what MVP means? No? Okay. Um, so it, it means, um, essentially, what is the minimum amount of, of solution do you develop uh, to, to solve the problem? Um, we're going to look at a, uh, one, one that I think is probably the best uh, tech cases out there. Um, and that's Unsplash. Has anybody heard of Unsplash.com? No? All right, so um, Unsplash was developed by two friends uh, that, that saw a problem. Um, how many people are, are looking for stock photography for, for a client? Um, you know, you're building a website and you're like, yeah, hey, I need stock photography. Well, most stock photography is like the same, like cheesy grins, cheesy smiles, cheesy poses, all that kind of stuff. And these two guys are like, you know what, we're done with that. So what they did is they went and hired a, a local photographer. Um, and they, they said, hey, we want to take 10 photos at this coffee shop and we want to make them available to everybody for free. We believe that, that being able to do this, we have this idea that better stock photography or better universal royalty-free photography would be um, a, a place that we can play in. And so um, that's exactly what they did. They took three hours from the, from the time that they came up with this idea and had the, the photographer to it being launched. Um, so what does that look like? Well, they, they, used a, they used Tumblr. I need to f fix that slide. Uh, they used Tumblr um, and a $20 theme. So they, they didn't have to worry about hosting. It was just free. They could just stick it up there. Um, they hired that local photographer, and they took 10 photos at a coffee shop. Um, and, and, and those 10 photos are like uh, a computer with some wood, nice wood uh, table and a coffee and, and a guy sitting at a computer. That's, that's the 10 photos um, that they took. Then they uploaded them for free to the Tumblr site. So you could just download them. Um, they then, at the end of those three hours, they submitted uh, Unsplash to Hacker News, which is a place that they felt um, would be kind of where their audience was. Um, within a few hours of posting, um, these images were, were hosted on like their own Dropbox account too, so this is kind of crazy. Uh, they had over 20,000 photos downloaded. In fact, they had so many photos downloaded that they had hit their bandwidth quota in Dropbox, and so then the thing didn't work. Um, now, what was great about Unsplash is, is it didn't take a lot of time, right? It took three hours to build. It was a proof of concept. Um, they, they just used the tools that they had available. And in WordPress, it makes, makes sense to, to, for us to be able to do that as well, right? We could build a WordPress site. We can use Beaver Builder. We could use whatever and create a real quick minimum viable product to test the waters in. Um, so today, uh, Unsplash has over 2 million photos downloaded, which is kind of crazy. That's, um, that's a month. Um, they ended up being so simple that that's what set them apart. Their, their photos are now, uh, you can be a photographer and upload your own photos there. Um, but at the end of the day, it solves that problem. I use Unsplash almost all the time. I'm doing a design for somebody because I can go in and just type in coffee, or I can type in computer, and I'm going to find 100 photos. And I can just go and grab those in. And, and other apps have started to work with Unsplash to make that process even easier. Um, all right, so um, this, is, this is our, I, let me make sure it's my last clip. It is not my last clip. Man, this is, this is pretty good. All right, so this is a, a, a CJ clip yeah. here. Yes. 
can pay for it by closing the loophole for bonds. Yeah, I'll be stuck to the OMB, but I think it costs 50 billion. Closing the loophole is about 35 billion. Am I close? Yeah. So it's 15 billion to get a hole through. All right, so so they've they've really finalized that MVP at this point. They've they've went and said, okay, we got we got we have some things that we have to move out of the way because of, of legal issues. Um, so capping out um, our our MVP phase, we need to know what we we want to build, and we really need to start with um, a single product. Don't try to solve all the problem at once. Find that smallest possible problem, right? Unsplash said, hey, we think stock photography isn't great. Um, we want to do that better. Uh, and they, they subsetted stock photography by saying, hey, let's not just do everything. Let's do a small thing. And we know that um, for the majority of our target audience, we need to have a blank computer screen so that a web designer or uh, an app designer or a developer can put their um, piece of artwork, their, their app um, on those uh, computers. Second, we need to keep iterating, right? We're not just done once we have that first piece solved. Um, we need to constantly go and solve those bigger problems. And then the, the last thing is that we need to constantly communicate that vision of what our grand problem is. So, so Unsplash, their grand problem is we want to solve stock photography for everybody, um, and that's what we're going to solve. I think they're still trying to solve that problem. Um, now where they're trying to solve it is in product market fit. So product market fit is, um, as defined by uh, Mark Anderson, uh, it just means that being in a good market uh, with a product that can satisfy that market. So, so if you think of like a bell curve, um, product market fit is when you start going up that bell curve, right? Um, that's where you start to see um, people succeed. You start to see a lot of um, growth. You start to see a lot of revenue. You start to see all of these things because you're, you're iterating on your product and you're gaining more and more customers as you do that. Um, that's, that's the way Unsplash is today. Unsplash has now moved away from Tumblr. They're running their own um, custom-built application. They're um, hooking up and partnering with other um, developers and agencies to make their, uh, their product be, be available to everybody. So my, my guess is they probably will at some point make it be a paid service. Uh, so that's product market fit. Um, uh, the last phase is customer feedback. Um, so you've, you've, at this point, you've developed your product, you've started to get it out there, you've started to um, generate a lot of revenue, um, but you also want to know what are the other problems that people are facing with your product. Um, you know, if you, if you are, uh, say, WooCommerce, uh, let's take Gutenberg, for example. Since, since Gutenberg's a hot topic, think about Gutenberg. We're, we're now at a phase where we're looking to release it and we're looking to say, hey, how can we um, address different things with it? Um, that's, this is a great time to get customer feedback. So how do we get customer feedback? Well, we can do it in a few ways. We can do it through surveys. So we all know what a survey is, right? You send out an email and there's a list of 10 or 15 questions. Um, could be a feedback box on your website. So you've got a product page up, you've got some sort of a page. You could say, hey, um, what, uh, you know, what, what's preventing you from, from purchasing this product? Um, you could reach out directly. So an, another way is, is to take your email list that you've got as customers and you can say, hey, how do I, you know, Mark, um, you know, what, what is missing about, about product X? Or, or, or Greg, what's, what's missing about product Y? Um, another thing is we all likely have Google Analytics and some sort of user analytics inside of our software. Look at that. Run, run with that and you can help them to make some data informed decisions. Um, finally, looking at usability tests. So if you have a, a software product, talk to a user, write up some questions and have them go through what those questions are or try to have them use your product or even go outside of your audience find a new group of people and have them go through it. Because that's, if somebody's never seen your product before, you're gonna get some good kind of understanding of, of where maybe some shortfalls are. All right, so, building products. Uh, so we, we've hit five, five areas. Uh, idea and vision, right? 
making sure that you have that, that formulated and you have, you have understanding of what that problem is that you're trying to solve and the solution for it. You've set up a, a value proposition so that you have uh, a way to explain to your customer base what you're going to use um, and how you're going to solve that problem. Um, third, you've hit a minimum viable product, so you've developed something um, to, to sell them and you've, you've likely put up a sales page and you've started accepting customers. You're still iterating at that point, but at the next phase you'll finally hit is product market fit. So you're getting more revenue, you're likely adding on more employees. We're all successful, multi-millionaires, and uh, now we can go get customer feedback. Um, so I'm AJ Morris. I'm a product manager at a hosting company called Liquid Web, uh, and I do this every day. Um, so I'm, I'm talking to customers, I'm looking at, at where, where our product fits in the market, who is the audience, what is our value proposition, and constantly changing these things. Um, it's, it, these phases are always kind of a, hey, let's go back and forth and figure out what works and what, what doesn't work and readdress things. So thanks for coming, um, and if you have any questions, let me know.